This is Katie, co-host of Coffee with Keeping Katie. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. I'm the Greg. And I am Dave Show. We host the Greg and Dave Show on Public House Media. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. Once you're done with this episode, I hope you'll come check out our show, The Greg and Dave Show, where we talk about strange, bizarre, and sometimes just downright quirky news stories that you may not have heard about. A new show comes out every Wednesday. Be sure to subscribe on iTunes. And hey, thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. Throughout history, the course of sports has been shaped by one thing, the fans. From the moments you never dreamed of. To the moments that still give you nightmares. Behind the band! Through the good and the bad, fans have helped change the games we watch and the players we love. They may not be the most logical people. You are a factory of sadness! I'll see you Sunday. But they know their teams better than anybody. They'll blow in the ninth. You may not always see them, but you know where to find them. After all, there's nothing quite like the view from the cheap seats. Broadcasting as part of the Public House Media Network. Grab a chair and enjoy all there is in... The, the cheap, cheap seats. seats. And welcome back to the Friday edition of the Cheap Seats. Matt Coyne, as always, alongside Jake Holmes. Jake, how are you doing today? Oh, uh, Matt, there's preseason football on last night. Uh, we're going to have some more this week. And, you know, what else could you possibly want more in life? It's football. Football's coming back. It's back, baby. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, it's we're, we're getting close to the best time of the year. Yeah, yeah, I, I love I love football. It's my favorite time preseason. Uh, you know, it, it 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 I get more excited for it each year. I mean, I, I guess. I mean, it, there's just so much. I'm always so worried of the players getting hurt, but you know, it's it's all part of it, I guess. So, yeah, and I mean, like like you know, watching the guys from college. Like last night on the NFL Network, you had uh, Cleveland and, and the Giants. You had the Browns and the Giants. Top two picks in the draft. Mm-hmm. Got to see Saquon knock off a 40 yard gain on his first ever carry like that stuff's awesome like that's what you that's what you watch the preseason for um and I'll, I'll tell you i have a good time watching preseason i mean i'm i know i'm a nerd but um i have a good time watching it i you know i i enjoyed watching mason rudolph play for the Steelers mm-hmm. last night it, it's a lot of fun yeah and it, it, you get to see these players who are are playing for a position you know you, you have the vet, veterans who know they have a spot you know guys who know they're going to be first second string but then you have these ones who are playing their hearts out because they know this this is where they have to prove they get four games to prove it and you know next uh next thursday i will be actually i think i told you jake going to lambo mm-hmm. to see the steelers and packers play and uh, some people have been giving me grief about it. why are you going to a, a preseason game and i said well one the steelers are coming to lambo i mean why would i not and two, exactly. I get to see, you know, I might not ever get to see some of these players live again. Yeah, I won't get to see Roethlisberger and Le'Veon and, and Antonio Brown, but I'll get to see, uh, you know, these players that are fighting for positions and it, it's, they're normally, you know, you get, you get to see some big plays. Yeah, and I mean the Steelers in particular. I mean we're both obviously Steeler fans, but there's some intriguing battles, mm-hmm. uh, position battles. I mean you have uh, John Bostic and Tyler Matakiewicz who are really battling out for that second uh, linebacker spot in place of Shazier. You know Vince Williams obviously the number one, but you have a battle for that second for that second spot. Uh, the fifth receiver on the team is wide open. I mean, the team is stacked with wide receivers, mm-hmm. and 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 also the running back battle. I mean, is is Fitzgerald Toussaint going to get a nod? I mean, probably not. I mean, the running backs on that team are probably going to be Le'Veon Bell, James Conner, Stephen Ridley. Mm-hmm. But but still, it's going to be an interesting dynamic. Do they want to bring in a fourth running back? Does Fitz Toussaint do something really do do something really well as as well as a fifth round pick, Jalen Samuels? It's 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 fun to watch. It's fun to watch stuff like that. I don't, I, I I don't care what you say about me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like I said, it's it. I'm getting more into it uh, watching, the, especially the guys fighting for position. So, uh, but. Uh, 
Jake and I have a lot of lot of football for you today. Uh, mainly, the whole show is football. We're gonna be um, when we get in. We're gonna get into the AFC West, NFC West. Uh, we're gonna have uh, a special guest on today, Matt Jennings, talking to us about fantasy football. Uh, and then we're also gonna have the quiz show as well. Maybe I'm hoping Matt sticks around for the quiz show, and so it's just not you and I today, Jake. But yeah. Uh, but real quick, we're just gonna get into some. Uh, headlines here. We're gonna, we, you know, Jake and I, we're big baseball fans. We want to make sure that we uh, give baseball their love today. Uh, Jake, this weekend is nickname weekend, uh, which is one of my favorite weekends. Uh, it's, it's, you know, they just started this, but Jake, I don't know if you've seen some of the uh, uniforms that are being uh, that are happening, but my favorite, I'm just gonna tell you, is Brad Boxberger who is putting emojis on the back of his jersey. <laughs> I saw that. That's fantastic. Yeah, no, I, I I, agree. I think it's fun. You know, I mean, like last year, last year, um, which was pretty cool. I mean, they had uh, the Pirates Cardinals at, at Bowman Field in Williamsport, my hometown. Yeah. yeah. Um, so um, so that that was a lot. That was a lot of fun. And they had, you know, like Andrew McCutcheon had Koch, you know, yeah. I mean, it's it's fun. And it brings a little bit of personality to baseball that sometimes we lose in August, mm-hmm. you know, you know, and it, it's unfortunate, but that's the way the game is. I mean, it can get a little dry over 162 games, especially during this month when, uh, you know, just before the playoff races start heating up. But no, I, I love it. I, I think that it's I think it's great for the game. Um, and uh, and yeah, what, what would be on the back of your jersey there, Sixer? I, you know, I don't know. I, a lot of people call me uh, coin toss. I've been called uh, other uh, other things, but coin co- coin toss. I've been called coinacopia. Uh, you know, just different things. I won't say some of the other ones that have things that I, you know, you, you can use your imagination, Jake. Uh, but yeah, that, I mean, it'd probably be coin toss, something like that. What about you? Well, I mean, uh, my my all time favorite nickname is Roddy J all day. For those that don't know my real name, my I, my real name isn't Jake. You know, I mean, I, I go by Jake, but it's it's my real name is not even close to Jake. But um, but yeah, I mean, it's Rodman, and then my middle initial J. So Roddy J all day. Uh, that would probably be on the back of back old thirty one. Yeah, I li- yeah. I mean, I guess uh, mine might be six or two. That was always my nickname in church softball. So uh, it would be one of those two. So. Uh, well, yeah, I-, I love this. I love this weekend because this is a game that so many people play growing up. It's America, you know, America's pastime. It's 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 fun. It, I think it's great for the kids. I think it's like you said, it, it brings it back down to where baseball should be, uh, and and I think that's a lot of fun. So uh, th- there's some races. Jake and I just want to touch on it real real quick before we uh, uh, get into our next segment. But uh, Jake and I have been running down the standings. A few highlights we want to just tell you about the Red Sox Yankees. Yankees. Jake never saw this coming. Uh, Red Sox are up almost ten games on the Yankees now. I I really thought this was going to stay a close race, but it has not. It it isn't, and it's not going to get closer. No, nope. I, I mean it doesn't look like it's going to get closer. I mean, eighty one and thirty four going into you know. I mean, it's. It's crazy. Yeah. I mean, that's such a good record. I mean, they're on pace to win like 110 games. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 wild. The Red Sox are so good. Yeah. But um but yeah, I mean, I understandably the Yankees pitching, you know, Severino's been getting getting knocked around. Mm-hmm. Sonny Gray got demoted to the pen. Yeah. Um I which I mean, their pitching just isn't there right now. Luckily, it's early enough before the big races start heating up. I mean, they're fine. The Yankees are going to go to the mm. playoffs. I mean, let's be real. Oh yeah. But um, but it's luckily it's early enough that they that they're still that they still have the ability to you know to to bounce back from it. Judge is going to be you know Aaron Judge. Um, you know his his hand is healing. You know, I mean, so I mean it's you know the Yankees aren't completely out of the water, but they're probably they're more than likely not going to win this division. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so this division is starting to get separated. The Indians are about 10 games up as well. You got uh, Houston still well uh, in it with the West. Uh, the National League East, Phillies, Braves still in a close race. Nationals, I, I know they were somewhat sellers at the trade deadline, Jake, but I'm still not completely um, throwing them out of the water yet in that East. Well, Bryce is playing better. Yeah. I mean, Bryce is playing a lot better. I mean, what was it? Uh, Wednesday. Wednesday or Tuesday. I can't remember. Um, I mean, he went like four for five against the Braves. Like, I mean, he, he's playing better. And I mean, really, he's the 
you know, he's 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 the oil of the wheel. You know, I mean, he's 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 the one that gets it going. And uh, and and yeah, I mean, the, the Nationals. I I agree. I don't think they're out of it at all. Um, especially, I mean, they're only five and a half out. I mean, yep. of the Phillies, who I mean, they're they're pitching very good, but. Um, I mean, other than that, I mean, Atlanta and Philadelphia at the top of the division, I mean, they're good teams, but, I mean, they're certainly beatable. I mean, uh, Washington could certainly get there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then you got in the Central, uh, you got Cubs and Milwaukee. uh, You know, they're kind of going step for step here. Uh, Cardinals, Pirates, uh, you know, obviously those two teams are a little further back. Pirates making the big splash with Chris Archer, him getting his first uh, win the other night. Uh, Jake, I think this is going to be Cubs or Brewers. Uh, I think that's, you know, I don't see the Pirates. I, I don't, Cardinals definitely not Pirates. I don't think they're going to, and we've talked about this, I don't think that they're going to make a move for this division. Uh, but they still got a chance for a wild card. Yeah, and I wanted to run something by you, too. Yeah. Um, you know, we were, we, we've obviously talked at length about the Pirates, you know, over the last mm-hmm. couple of weeks with what they've done. Um, even if they don't make the playoffs this year, even if this is, you know, the, you know, they don't get there, I'm still really optimistic about Me the too. next three oh, years. Absolutely. So I'm glad we're on the same page there because, I mean, if the Pirates don't make the playoffs this year, I mean, it's not, you know, you know, it's not the end of the world, you know. Yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, it's not like they made that kind of splash. I mean, Archer's contract's nice. Kayla's good. Um, so I mean, I, 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 I'm, I'm with you. I. The Pirates, they aren't going to win the division, certainly. The playoffs, I'm not quite sure. But, um, but man, I, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased with what, with what we have in Pittsburgh. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I don't think St. Louis gets there either. I mean, this is a battle between uh, the Cubs and the Brew Crew. Yeah. Yeah, and then you have in the West, uh, still a close race there with Diamondbacks, Dodgers, Rockies, uh, separate, separated by really a couple games. Uh, this uh, Dodgers, I don't think, are doing what everyone thought they would be doing, um, coming out of the or out of the trade deadline with making some huge moves. Uh, but you know, they're kind of just sitting there. Uh, I still am second to them, expecting them to separate, but we'll see. Uh, so, uh, Jake and I uh, are obviously, uh, as always, we're happy that you're joining us. When we come back, we're going to be touching a lot on football uh, for the rest of the show. So make sure you stay with Jake and myself here in the Cheap Seats. Get on the floor, floor, like it's your last chance. If you want more, more, then here I am. And we are back with Jake and Matt here in the Cheap Seats. Want to remind you, we are presented by Squadcast.fm, uh, and we're, we are on the Public Health Media Network. You can listen to us on iTunes, Google Podcasts, anywhere you get your uh, podcasts. And obviously, you can go on to the phmedia.com, uh, find out more about the Cheap Seats as well as other shows presented by Public House Media. Get some swag for your sh- for the, your favorite show. Uh, check us out on the Facebook page. Uh, also on our uh, the Cheap Seats Facebook page for our daily uh, for our daily poll question uh, after each show. Uh, Monday is Christian and Jonathan. Two, uh, Wednesday is uh, Max and Keith, and then Fridays are Jake and me, Matt Coin. So, Jake, we have been going through the. Uh, through all the divisions, we are leading up to our uh, up and up to our uh, playoff team. Sorry, wow! I just completely had a brain <laughs> fart there. Oh my gosh! Wow! Uh, <laughs> leading up to our playoff teams and ultimately our uh, Super Bowl champion. So, Jake, uh, last week we went through the South. If you wouldn't mind, how about you tell us a little bit about what our predictions were in the South? Yeah, you know, we we we're we're both on the Jaguars in the in the AFC South. I, I rightfully so. I mm-hmm. have them I have them at 10 and 6. Uh you have them at 11 and 5. I have the Texans. Uh we both have the Texans at 10 and 6 finish um, you know, second in the division. Uh t- I'm on the Titans 7 and 9 um for third. The Colts, you have the Colts at 7 and 9 for third. I have the Colts at 7 and 9 for fourths, and the Titans for you at 6 and 10. So I got Jags, Texans, Titans, Colts. You got Jags, Texans, Colts, Titans. So we're pretty close. Yeah. Um, so for the NFC South, I have the Falcons winning at 12 and 4. I got the Saints 
also finishing top four, losing the tiebreaker. Um, the Panthers at 10 and 6. The old Buccaneers and Barry Gold whip stepped out the treasure hold. Casper, remember that one? <laughs> but on um, 6 and 10, uh, NFC South. Saints 13 and 3. Uh, that's what you have. Sorry. The Saints at 13 and 3. Falcons at 12 and 4. Panthers at 10 and 6. And the Buccaneers at 4 and 12. Great. Well, Jake, how about you get us started this week with, with our Wests and uh, t- tell us what you. Let's start with. Uh, you want to start with AFC? Yeah, why not? And I, okay. I'll, tell, I'll tell you, Matt, I don't know if you agree with me or not, but you talk about the polar opposites with, this, with these two divisions. Mm. I look at the NFC South or the NFC West as a, as a closed case. I mean, it's yeah. done, you know, or the NFC West. The AFC West, I'm not sure. I mean, it could be one. You know what? I'll be honest with you. It could be any of the four teams. Because you know Denver's got Denver's got the defense. They have a they upgraded a quarterback. But I'm still going to say that I think the best team in this division. They they don't have the best stadium, but I think the the LA Chargers are the best team in this division with Philip Rivers, Melvin Gordon, Tyrell Williams, and Keenan Allen on the outside. Mike Williams, the rookie last year from Clemson, should be healthy. He was a beast in college, man. Holy smokes! And they've got uh, they've got Ingram and Bosa on the outside mm, yeah. uh, on 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 defense, and they've got some really good corners as well with uh, Casey Hayward. So uh, I got I got the Chargers finishing ten and six, winning the AFC West. Yeah, I'm right there with you. I have uh, Los Angeles Chargers first place, eleven and five. Uh, Philip Rivers has always been. Uh, I know so many people aren't fans of him. He's always uh, been a quarterback that I've enjoyed watching. I mean, I, like you said, they got Melvin Gordon, uh, who's on my fantasy team. So I hope he has another big year. Uh, and then you got uh, Allen, as you as you said. I mean, they have uh, they have a great uh, a great uh, line. They just picked up. Uh, uh, Pouncy in the off season, and they That's have right. Yeah, they they yeah. have they have a really good uh, line. Like you said, they got Bosa on defense. I I, I think they're the most talented team. Uh, if they can put it together, I really don't. Uh, I I really see that they could walk away with this division. Yeah, and they're a, they're a sneaky team too. Mm-hmm. I mean, like they're they're a team that could go into you know Pittsburgh or Jacksonville in beat a really good team in the playoffs yeah i mean you know they're built that way and they've got the they've got the veteran experience of quarterback i'm you know we're we're on the we're on the same page there man i i i'm i'm anxious to i'm still anxious to see how this division plays out and i i from here (laughs) i mean it's it's just it's a little bit uh you know foggy for me um but uh but yeah, my second place team is the Oakland Raiders. They're only two two seasons out from a twelve and four year, um, and I think that team was a lot better than I mean, you know, than than even that. I mean, yeah. they're they're on their way. Probably trade their best defensive player though in Khalil Mack. Um, they just can't come up with something. But I love Derek Carr. He's twenty five, but. Gosh, you'd think the guy was 38. Yeah, I mean, he's just so mature and he's mm-hmm. he's, he's so good and he's a good leader. Um, you know, I like Derek Carr. I like their weapons on the outside. I love Amari uh, Amari Cooper. Uh, I'm a big Jordy Nelson fan. I I don't know where Martavis Bryant fits in, and I guess that he doesn't even know what the playbook is. I I don't know <laughs> if he can't read or what. But um, I wouldn't be surprised with how he how his career ended in Pittsburgh. Yeah. But um. But yeah. And John Gruden's a heck of a coach. See, I like, um, I like the Oakland Raiders to finish nine and seven, finish in second in the division. Yeah. Yeah. It's, well, we switch on this one, man. I thought we'd have a division that was the same. I don't think I don't know if we've had a division that's the same. Uh, I, I'm picking Kansas City Chiefs uh, ten and six to finish second. Uh, I think that. Uh, even though I can't stand them, uh, you got Tra- Travis Kelsey uh, at tight end, who's always you know going to be their biggest threat. You got Mahomes, uh, who is uh, I-, I don't see why he wouldn't have a decent year. Uh, they have, I think, one of the most underrated uh, running back cores. I'm not saying that they're you know fantastic, but you know with Kareem Hunt, Spencer Ware, and um, uh, Chark and I can never say his Chark. Name. Oh yeah, Chark West. Kendrick West. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I mean, you you have three running backs there that I think are really solid. Uh, they have a team I think that can uh, that can come out and uh, 
put a, a quality product on that field and their defense you know isn't I, I know they they've lost a few a few players but uh, I think that you know they will be able to put a solid season together yeah and that's that's really what worries me about the Chiefs is that defense mm-hmm. uh, they lost Marcus Peters you know Tamba Holly Penn State uh, <laughs> um, he you know he, he you know he he retired and um, other than that I mean they don't really have too much other than Eric Berry and I mean Eric Berry's fantastic and what a story man oh good lord I mean what, what a guy mm-hmm. uh, is Eric Berry but I mean on the but on the other side, side of him is probably going to be Robert Golden and Steeler fans know him all too well yeah so I mean that's what worries me about the Chiefs um, but man that offense is going to be a lot of fun to watch like you said Kareem Hunt Charkandrick Wentz, uh, West Spencer Ware. Um, I'm not sold on the Big 12 quarterback, so I'm not quite sure what Pat Mahomes is going to do. Um, but you know, he's got he's got Tyreek Hill on the outside. I mean, who's one of the most exciting players in the sport? I think the Chiefs are going to go eight and eight. I think that they're going to be decent. Uh, they'll finish third in the division. Um, they're going to score a lot of points, but they're going to give up a lot of points as well. Um, they're going to lose. There's going. They're going to lose some games, thirty-eight to thirty-five. So um, that's where I'm. In, that's where I am with the Chiefs. Uh, I got them going eight and eight, finishing third in the AFC West. Yeah, yeah. So I, this, like you said at the beginning, that this division I think is going to be really close. I, I have Oakland Raiders finishing nine and seven. Uh, I, I think that uh, I'm right there with you. I think they have, uh, you know, their offense, Derek Carr, uh, as long as he stays healthy this year, I, I think that they're going to do fine. I uh, like, I'm a big Amari Cooper fan as well. Uh, they picked up, you know, with Martavis Bryant and Jordy Nelson when flags were at half mass uh, in the Green Bay area when he uh, left. Uh, you know, I, I think it, I was surprised he went there. You know, it, you know, I was telling a lot of people here, Jake, when they're like, you know, Jordy Nelson left. I said, hey, I have nothing against him. I mean, I, he's a solid player. To see him go to the Oakland Raiders made me sad. <laughs> uh, yeah. It, yeah, he, he's – I mean, we'll see what he brings. I, I think he has – I think Derek Carr has some great weapons now uh, to throw the ball to. Martavis Bryant, as as you and I all too well know, he could go out there and have a 200-yard game, or he could go out there and pout and have zero yards. Yeah, and, and and really, I'll tell you, and, and another thing that interested me about Martavis Bryant going to the Raiders, and I mean, he he he's a Raider, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, yeah. Jordy <laughs> I mean, Nelson is not, he is. <laughs> uh, yeah, ex- yeah, I mean, he's he's the stereotypical Raider, and um, but the thing that, that always, that made me wonder about that is obviously it was a third round pick. That's a decent return for, you know, a talented Martavis Bryant. Mm-hmm. Not a great, not a, not a great mind, but, um, and the Steelers got their, their draft pick in return. I'm wondering where the heck he fits in. Uh, he's not a slot receiver. Yeah. Do they put, I mean, do they put Amari Cooper who plays a little bit of the slot? Jordy Nelson certainly doesn't play a whole lot of the slot. They've got a bunch of flankers. I mean, mm-hmm. that's that's what they have. I I don't understand where he fits in. I mean, you need to have you you got to have a slot receiver in there, especially with a with a team that's got a ninety seven year old running back and Marshawn Lynch. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, I I I didn't understand what o, where Oakland was going with that trade. I didn't know what they saw in him um, that they didn't already have. But um, but I mean, we'll see. I mean, we'll see. So. Um, but but yeah, I mean, so we were obviously we're all we're obviously pretty down on the Super Bowl Fifty champion Denver Broncos. <laughs> right? Yeah, wah, wah. <laughs> yeah, wah, wah, wah. I, you know, I like the Broncos. I I like I like the Broncos. I like their defense. I love Von Miller, and they've got Derek Wolf, the kid from Youngstown, mm-hmm. um, as a defense. Ben, I like the defense, but I mean they they got rid of too many pieces, I think, to be able to compete. Akib talib has gone. You know, I mean, the no fly zone is all gone. Yeah. Um. You know, I mean, there's just, I mean, they they got rid of too many pieces to be able to put a competitive team. Um, on the field this year. I mean, and I like Case Keenum. He's an okay quarterback. He's a step up from Trevor Simeon and Paxton Lynch. But um, other than that, I I, I don't know. I, I have the Broncos going five and eleven. I I don't I don't know about you. Uh, I have yeah. I I don't. I'm not thinking too much of them this year. I have them six and ten. Uh, I I really wanted Jake for my OCD to put him eight and eight, just so I could have you know eight <laughs> nine ten eleven 
Uh, but <laughs> I figured that wasn't smart. So, uh, yeah, I, I, they had you know Case Keenum. You have uh, Paxton Lynch in the background, which obviously that that's not working out for him. Jake, I'll tell you what. There's a player that they picked up in the draft this year that I wanted the Steelers to get really bad, and that was Jake Butt from Iowa. I I mm. love him. I think he's a great tight end. Uh, I could be completely wrong, but I think he is going to be a great NFL player. Um, so Case Keenum, in my opinion, has some, you know, with, with Thomas, uh, Sanders, and Butt there. I think he has some great, great weapons to throw to. I, I really do. My problem is, is like you said, the defense, I don't see them giving up any less than any less than three, four touchdowns a game. Uh, and I just don't know if the offense has the, you know, the power to keep up with that. Uh, I I agree. They're gonna they're gonna be they're gonna be a boring team to watch. Yeah. I mean they're they're gonna they're gonna you know kind of suck the life out of you. Um, you know there's gonna be a lot of like seventeen fourteen games, but I mean hey if here's the thing with this division I mean anything anything can happen in my opinion with this division. I mean the Broncos win three games that they shouldn't. They're eight and eight, and they're yeah. right in the, they're right in the mix. So I mean, I know that three games that they shouldn't is is a weird number, but I mean, they I mean they they play you know these two these they play their division rivals you know you know six times you know what I mean yeah. so I, I you know it, it, it's going to be interesting to see, but ultimately you know I'm I'm with you you know we're both on the Chargers um at at ten and six I'm on the Charger at ten and six you're on them at five and eleven. Uh, I got the Raiders finishing second at nine and seven. You got the Chiefs at ten and six. I got the Chiefs finishing third in the division at eight and eight. Raiders at nine and seven for you. Um, and then we're then we're all we're we're down on the mile high team. You know <laughs> they're they're below sea level. Uh, five and eleven. I I have the Broncos finishing five and eleven. You have them at six and ten. Yeah, yeah. So there you have it. There's our AFC West. When we come back, Jake and I will be talking to you about our NFC. All right, and welcome back, Jake. We're going into our last division here. The NFC West. And uh, so next week, uh, Jake and I haven't even talked about this, so we're going to talk about this all with you now. Jake, so next week I think we do our playoff teams based off of our predictions and then uh, our Super Bowl prediction. Is that is that how you think we should do that? Or do we just do playoff next week and then up to the Super Bowl, up to the championships, and then do those the following week? I'm in. I, I think we should throw in some bold predictions, too. I know that I have a few things that yeah. that um, people are going to be like, oh, my gosh, what an idiot. But, I mean, <laughs> we, we, we bring back a little bit of the bold prediction segment, you know. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we, you know, get it cracking a little bit. I like the idea. Let's, let's give them a little tease. Okay. I like that. All right. So, next week, you, you heard it. We will be giving our playoff predictions and uh, lead you up to the championship games with uh, some bold bold predictions as well. So, Jake, NFC West, you, you say this is a locked division. Uh, wh- why do you say that? Who do you have in this division? I mean, the Rams are the best. Mm. I mean, I don't think there's anyone on this div- in this division that's even close. I think signed, sealed, and delivered. Send them. I, you know, I mean, the Rams are going to finish 12-4. and four. They're going to win win this division. They're going to run away with it. Uh, they've got one of the better defenses in the league. Uh, Jared Goff, I know he's only had one good year. I mean, he's only been in the league two years. But, I mean, last year he was he was really good. And, you know, they got, I think, the best offensive weapon in the NFL in Todd Gurley. Um, I, I don't think it's Le'Veon Bell. I don't think it's David Johnson. I don't think it's Ezekiel Elliott. I think it's Todd Gurley. Um, they've got good receivers around them. They pr- picked up uh, Brandon Cooks. I, I just don't. I just I think they're going to also figure something out with Aaron Donald, by the way, too. Mm-hmm. Um, they have to. I mean, he's the best defensive lineman. He's the best defensive player in the sport. Well, I mean, they, yeah, the, yeah. Go so on, I'm sorry, I, I'm <laughs> Oh, no, 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 no. That's fine. Um, so Rams 12 and four. I don't think anybody even come close to touching them. Yeah, I have them at 12 and four as well. Uh, first place. I 
uh, Jared Goff, I don't see I don't see him letting up from the from last year. Todd Gurley, I <laughs> I mean he is just an absolutely absolute monster. He's turned into that uh, player when you see him against you on fantasy on you know in fantasy you pretty much know he's going to put up 30, 40, 50 points. Uh, they have like you said they picked up Braylon Cooks. They have Robert Woods on the other side. Uh, they have such a stacked team. And then you go over to defense, and I think that's uh, – and everybody, obviously. I mean, that's their strong point. You got Aaron Donald. Um, they came out the other day, I think it was on Wednesday, and said that they're in the same zip code with Aaron Donald. Jake, like you said, you don't let a guy like that walk. You do what you what you need to do. Uh, but then again, people say, well, you don't like let a guy like Le'Veon Bell walk. But in my opinion, you let him walk. Uh, but Aaron Donald, I think, is just so good and so strong and so – just effective on that right side I, I i they they have to do what they need you know they need to do what they have to 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 keep him okay so you just we i'm fired up now baby. <laughs> so the people that say you you don't let Le'Veon bell go have never been on mcknight road when he's <laughs> driving around with legarrett blunt i'm sorry you look at aaron donald the human being, and you look at Le'Veon oh. Bell, the human being. There's no, no comparison yeah. at well, all. I mean, yeah, and Jake, on. like I said, I mean that. That's why I said I. I think you let him go. I know so many people who are. They they always talk to me about that. I'm sorry, we're getting we're getting off the West, but you know I'll give my piece that I don't want him on the team. I, I think he's a huge I distraction. I, I think he's a great player. Don't get me wrong. Uh, he's just too big of a distraction. So, anyways, let's let's stay on the West. Jake, we always get started and we get down that rabbit hole with the Steelers. So, uh, so yes, again, I have the Rams at twelve and four. Um, I think that they're going to have a huge year this year. Yeah, and I mean, uh, well, I mean, it, just real quick, Aaron Donald's a Penn Penn Hills kid, you know. Yeah. I mean, Pittsburgh, but but, um, but yeah, I mean, I, you know, the next closest team, and this, I don't know if this will surprise you at all. Um, I think it's the Forty ers I mean, I you look at how they finished the year last year. What were they one in ten before yeah. the Garoppolo trade? They finished five and eleven. I mean, they they're they're going in the right direction. I yeah. like what they did, you know, in the draft. Um that you know, they're 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 working on their offensive line. They know what they're doing. They know what they're doing and I really like Kyle Shanahan as head coach. Um I think I think they're going to be a 9 and 7, 8 and 8 team. I I'll, I'll say 8 and 8. Okay. I'll, I'll I'll go with 8 and 8. Um but yeah, I mean the 49ers, I I think they're going to be okay. I I think they're going to win a few games that they shouldn't. Um, you know, against, you know, you know, Seattle, they might even take they might even take one against the Rams. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, it, it's, it, the Rams drop weird games like that, um, but then they win really weird. They've always won really weird games like that. Mm-hmm. I, I think the 49ers at eight and eight, they got the quarterback. That's what they've been um, missing since Colin Kaepernick. Um, you, you know, I mean, really, they, that's what they've been missing. So. Um, but, yeah, I got the I got the Niners at eight and eight. Yeah, uh, not too surprised uh, with you because I have them at nine and seven in second. Uh, I think the Garoppolo trade was uh, this might be one of the biggest turning points of a team just from one player, and it's amazing to see how much they were hurting for that player. Uh, now he doesn't have a full season under his belt. Obviously, we'll see, we'll see what happens. He he's going into this year known that he's the man, knowing that he needs to get the job done. Uh, so we'll see what he has. And, you know, one thing to forget, you know, that people are forgetting, I'm not saying he's a top tier uh, running back, but they did get Jarek McKinnon, who I think is going to be is going to help them a lot in the run game. Yeah, Jarek McKinnon, he uh, NFL, um, the running back, uh, he, he broke the record for running backs at the NFL combine at Brent Pratt. Strong yep. guy, but he he can catch the ball out of the backfield and he can run out of the eye. I mean, yep. I no, I agree with you. I think the Jarek McKinnon um, acquisition, and I think it's going to work. For, it works for both teams. Mm-hmm. I mean, you look at the running backs in Minnesota with you know with Dalvin Cook and Latavius Murray. I mean, there was no place for Jarek McKinnon, and he's a darn good back. I mean, yep. so I I, I like the situation there i i agree with you and you know he doesn't have to compete with like a carlos hyde or anything that for some reason um you know they always liked him over everyone else i mean for whatever reason i, I, I don't know but um <laughs> but but yeah i mean and, and it's unfortunate i i don't know how you feel i didn't like the old seattle seahawks teams i i don't know what direction you're going with your i can't team. i mean i can't i can't stand pete carroll so yeah i i i don't i didn't like the old 
Seattle Seahawks teams when they were going to the Super Bowl and stuff. But I'll tell you, I love Russell Wilson. Yeah. I, I, I worship the guy. I worship the ground the guy walks on, honestly. Mm. Um, so he, he's a good dude, and really they just never did anything, I don't think, to help him. I mean, they, they put all the money into the defense, and then they were just like, ah, the offensive line, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think the Seattle Seahawks are going to go 8-8. Eight and eight because of Russell Wilson. That's the only reason. Um, 49ers win the tiebreaker, so they finish second. But, um, but yeah, Seattle, they, the defense is a mess. The, you know, the whole locker room is a mess, but they still got that man, Russell Wilson, um, you know, who's, who I think is the most underappreciated player in the NFL. So I think we're gonna, we, we just had our first division that we agreed on. And I have to say, this is the division that just a few years ago sent a 7-9 team to the playoffs it's always been such a weird division it's always one of those divisions you always have teams every year I feel like it's different every year there's you know just a few years ago the Cardinals were the team to beat Seattle was the team to beat now all of a sudden the Chargers are so uh, I have Seattle at uh, seven and nine Uh, I, I I'm right there with you with Russell Wilson I think he is such a great person uh and i know that doesn't make you a great player on the field but i think he is a great person i love watching him play everything that he does uh, i think he's a solid player i feel bad for him because uh i think if he was on a better team he would uh, be a lot uh, a much bigger of an impact the seahawks you know known for their huge defenses lost most of them like their defense is just left <laughs> so yeah. uh they don't have anything there anymore and there's really nothing left to this team. Yeah, I mean, it's it's crazy. It's crazy. You know, we, we talk about baseball, how the Kansas City Royals in, what, 2015 were winning World Series and how they can barely win 50 games. But, um, you know, it's the same deal in football. I mean, the Seahawks were so good. I mean, those boys were dogs. I mean, they were so incredibly good. And then... You know, Marshawn left, and that kind of, yeah. you know, it just dominoed from there. And, uh, you know, the Legion of Boom has gone just like the, uh, you know, whatever the Bronco, the no-fly zone, whatever yeah. they call it. Yeah. You know? Um, but, um, but yeah, and I'll, I'll be honest with you. I wouldn't be surprised if the Cardinals finished third. Um, that's why I have them at seven and nine. I love Larry Fitzgerald. I think their defense is going to be okay. I like Patrick Peterson. Ta- the loss of Tyron Matthew is going to hurt their secondary, but still, I think they're going to be good enough to tread water. I think Josh Rosen's going to have a decent rookie year. I don't think that he's going to be, you know, uh, he's not going to have like a Kurt Warner year or anything, but he's going to be, he's going to be okay. He's going to be better than what Carson Palmer was whenever he actually played. Mm-hmm. Um, the last couple of years, I, I I like the Cardinals finish seven and nine. I think they're going to be okay. Yeah, I have them at I have them at six and ten. But uh, you know they they were they're that team that you were talking about with the Broncos that a few few wins. And I think it really focuses on that quarterback. If you know, obviously they have Sam Bradford and Josh Rosen. Whoever ends up playing, I think we know it's going to. I mean, I'd be surprised if it's not Josh Rosen if he. If he has a good year, there is no reason why this team can't finish nine and seven. Uh, I don't know if that's going to be enough to get to the playoffs, but uh, you know, to finish uh, with a w- uh, winning season, uh, they they're getting there. I think they're getting back to where they were a few years back. Uh, Larry Fitzgerald, uh, I mean, that guy. I think he's going to be sixty years old and still be you know still be an impact. So, uh, but yeah, that's where I have him. I have him uh, coming up at the end, but I would not be surprised if two or three games and they they bump themselves up to second to third even maybe second yeah and I, and and i'll tell you another thing that i think hurt them i mean i can't remember what they they were either five and eleven or six and ten last year i can't remember but um they, they their best player was gone the entire year yeah i mean david johnson i mean he's back i mean he's healthy you know um he had he's had one and a half really good years um so i mean the the jury i think is still a little bit out on him but I mean, he when he, when he's when he plays well, he's amazing. You know, yeah. I mean, so I I I don't know. Uh, you know, with with the Cardinals, they're they're an intriguing team. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to this Friday edition of the Cheap Seats. I'm Jake Holmes. I'm bringing us back now. I mean, this is you know we we like to switch it up every now and then. Me and me and old Sixer, but uh, Jake Holmes with Matt Coin. I'm 
Very happy. I'm so thrilled to bring in, um, you know, to introduce uh, a special guest, a, a friend of mine for 20 years. And uh, that's saying something since I'm only 24, he, we're, since we're both 24. Um, I'm bringing in Matt Jennings, uh, a current writer for um, Top Shelf DDF, a, a really good fantasy football site um, as you are getting ready for uh, your fantasy football season. Matt, my brother, how are you today? Hey, Jake. Hey, Matt. How are you guys? Doing great. And doing great. Brilliant. Thanks. Thanks for brilliant. having me. Awesome. Awesome, man. So I, so y- y- I know that you've been listening to the show the last couple of weeks. Matt and I have been running through the divisions, you know, talking about, you know, our predictions for, um, you know, the, the upcoming season. Who do you got? Who do you got coming out of these divisions? Who's your Super Bowl champion, buddy? <laughs> My... Uh... I'm an Eagles homer for life, so naturally every year I'd like them to be the champions. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, this year, this year I've got it. I'm gonna buy high on the Chargers winning it all this year. Honestly. Oh, nice! Yeah, yeah. Uh, Philip Rivers, he's just amazing, and that whole team's just stacked. I really think they can do it this year. Nice, nice. Yeah, I, you know, Matt, I, I always, I always, lo- I, I respect your football knowledge as much as anybody. I mean, you know, you always, you always just have, you just have a way. You know, what I mean, it's just like you, but you always go against like the non, you always go against like the voluptuous pick. You know, what I mean, in the AFC, you never pick the Patriots, and that's that's you know one thing that I always that I always respect. And it's like you know you pick the Chiefs, and it's like I remember the one year like the Chiefs finished like six and ten the one year, and you know you said hey they're gonna win they're gonna win the AFC West, and what do you know they went twelve and four, and you know Andy Reid looked like a genius, you know. So um, I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna ta- I'm gonna take that. I mean I. We both have the Chargers winning the AFC West. So, um, you know, we're all on board there. But even just as much as your football knowledge, I respect your, your, your fantasy football knowledge. One thing about Matt Jennings to the listeners is we all think we're good at fantasy football, right? But no, I don't. Bad I don't, Jake. <laughs> but we all have bad years. Everybody has a bad year. Matt Jennings never has a bad year. So, Matt... Give us your big board. Who's your top five? Top five in fantasy. Yeah, top five in fantasy. Going with non PPR, I'd say you got to go with Todd Gurley still, because he's just been so phenomenal under Sean McVay. Then I'd go with uh, David Johnson. Bounce back year. He had a broken wrist last year, so his legs are still fine. He's playing for a contract. Next, you got a uh, Zeke Elliott. I don't really like the Cowboys, but I know Zeke's going to just get fed this year. No suspension. Dak's going to have a bit of a bounce back year. Zeke's on board. I think Antonio Brown is going to continue to be just an unstoppable beast. He'll be number four overall player with the volume Ben Roethlisberger is going to send him. And then number five five can be a toss-up. I mean... There's a lot of players out there. Odell, Saquon Barkley, two Giants I really like, could have just phenomenal years. It, I'd say Odell. Nice, nice, nice. Cool. And I want, I wanted to, I wanted to ask you. Last year in fantasy was a strange year. If you had a late first round pick, um, you know that was that was ideal because you could get Todd Gurley, but you could also like stack him with a DeAndre Hopkins. Is this one of those years? Do you think that it's better to have a late round pick this year than to be able to get Todd Gurley or you know uh, Ezekiel Elliott at one or two? Actually, I enjoy the late round picks, but this year I prefer drafting in the top five because I know I'm going to get one of those just amazing guys like Gurley or Johnson and the what. The wide receiver depth, there's not a lot of great wide receivers, but there's a ton of good wide receivers in the NFL, whereas there are only a few great running backs, and the rest are kind of mediocre. So I really want to get one of those top-flight running backs or top-flight wide receivers early, and then I can have flexibility to get depth in other positions. Sure, sure, yeah. Coiner, you got anything? 
Yeah, so Matt, you were talking uh, a lot about your top five. Do you see Love Bell uh, top ten? You didn't mention him, or do you think with all this drama and everything, uh, maybe he's not going to have as good as of a year this year? No, I'd still have him in the top ten. I mean, he's a phenomenal player. I wish he would just show up to the camp, and I'm sure Jake does too. Everyone wants Le'Veon Bell to just show up to camp and put the work in, earn the contract. Yeah. But, no, I'm going to have him finishing sixth, maybe seventh in fantasy. He'll be fine. He's going to be great, and the Browns are going to love him next year when he signs <laughs> up. I'm telling you, man, I, I – I, I just get amazed because I mean, it also we also you know hopefully we find out you know on the on the on the trivia show. I mean, the, the, this dude is so incredibly smart; it's crazy. But um, but I I need I need your advice, Matt. I I need your advice, and um, I no, I'm not asking I'm not asking for Sixers advice. I'm asking for Matt Jay's advice here. <laughs> oh come on! So. <laughs> so Number one overall. I think you kind of answered it already, but I'm in a keeper league, right? I have the number one overall pick because my team stunk last year, right? Um, right? So I have the choice to get. I have I have a trade offer. It's a first and a second round pick. Um, for it's I, I'd be sending. No, he'd be sending me a, for, a first and a second for my number one overall pick, which would be Todd Gurley, right? Is it right. worth? Is it worth taking his? fourth overall pick to get like a Saquon Barkley? Uh, in this case, I'd say so because num- number four overall and you get the second round pick, you're going to have a pretty stacked team. Your top three or four picks are just going to be leagues ahead of your next three or four picks. So, yeah, I'd probably sacrifice Gurley in order to get a uh, Zeke Elliott or someone like that, Le'Veon Bell. Yeah, nice, nice, cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm high on Saquon. Obviously, you know, you and I, you know, I, you know, you and I, oh, are, yeah. you know, me, you know, big, you know, Penn State fans. So, um, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited about, I'm pretty excited about Saquon. Uh, you know, I don't know about you, but um, oh, I'm yeah. certainly excited. Yeah, so Matt, uh, Alvin Kamara, uh, I got him last year, week three, week four. You see anybody uh, like that this year, somebody that uh, could come up? Obviously, I know injuries is a big thing, but do you see somebody who is sitting on the bench uh, but by week three, week four could make a big impact uh, in the NFL? Actually, I wrote an article on a bunch of guys that I think are going to have like secret breakouts, and... This guy, you don't even have to bother drafting him because I'm sure in the majority of leagues, 10-team leagues, he's going to go undrafted because he's facing a two-week suspension to start the season, Aaron Jones of the Green Bay Packers. Oh, Last man. Last year, he <laughs> played four full games mm-hmm. where he received 13 touches or more, and he averaged something like 95 yards every game and a touchdown. The guy's easily the most talented running back on that team and when he gets back from a suspension week three he's gonna take over he'll be the starting running back by week five easy yeah he won't be available in my leagues because i'm in the green bay area so he'll be (laughs) taken i was gonna say he's really you know matt matt jay's appealing to the uh you know the heavy wisconsin crowd that i know that we have you know Well, that's all I that's all I have for you, Matt. Jake, I'm sure you have some more. I'm just enjoying listening to you talk. So, Jake, what else you got for Matt? <laughs> I got one I got one last question for you and I know that it's you and you and I are very similar with this, Matt, cuz I know we've been playing, you know, we we've, we've been playing fantasy football in the same league, you know, and together for, you know, 10 years. We yeah. always keep our same team name. Um, you know, what's 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 a, what's, a, what's a, you change you change in Sleepless in Philadelphia? <laughs> Good name. Oh man, that's I love that title. And I honestly don't know if I can change it. Um my other league, I, I like playing as I like my title the weekly underdogs. This is another <laughs> one of my favorites. Yes. Cause yes. it seems like every week I'm projected at like eighty points and I'm just trying to struggle to fit the right team. So those 
but I love Sleepless in Philadelphia. We have that league again this year. I'm absolutely keeping that name. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Nothing was better than last year's Plexico Ch- Chamber. Uh, Plexico's Chamber Fantasy Football League. The yes. finals was Sleepless in Philadelphia versus the Pittsburgh Buyers Club. It was a cinematic adventure. <laughs> Um, that uh, that I will never forget, and I appreciate it much. Um, but um, but yeah, but yeah, Matt. I mean, you know, boy genius. You want you want to stick around for a quiz show? Well, sure. That sounds great. Rock on. Sounds good. So uh, so Matt, you want to do you want to do the honors? Absolutely. So uh, when we come back here, uh, we will have Jake and Matt up against each other in our Friday edition of the quiz show. Make sure you stay with Jake. Matt and Matt here in the cheap seats. And welcome back to the Cheap Seats. Matt Coyne, Jake Holmes, special guest Matt Jennings. Uh, time to go into the quiz show guys so the way i have this set up is we're going to do uh each of you against each other i have a few questions here uh and uh a couple of the questions are going to be a back and forth there's a few correct answers uh so for this first one it's going to be one of those there's seven possible answers we'll go back and forth Uh, my uh my my low college gpa i did well in communications but my general studies weren't very good i think that's going to come out here Yes. So, well, well, we'll see what happens here. But like I said, we got uh, we got some questions here for you. Uh, I think there's some good. They're all surrounded around the NFL. So uh, we will get started here uh, with the first question having to do with running backs. Uh, so again, we'll go back and forth, and uh, we'll see who prevails. You guys ready? We'll we'll figure it out. Yeah, I think we got it. Yeah. All right, so let's get started. NFL players uh, who have rushed for more than 2,000 yards. Correct. Eric Dickerson. Correct. Uh, Barry Sanders? Yes. Um, well, Adrian Peterson, yeah. He, finished, he was came like mm-hmm. two yards short, Adrian Peterson. Yep. Of the NFL record, sorry, yeah. Uh, Walter Payton. Mm, Walter Payton uh-huh. was not one of the 2,000 yard rushers. We have Eric Dickerson, I, Adrian I can, Peterson. I, I can only, I can only, do I need to name another one? Uh, yeah, yeah. I guess I should probably say before I go on. Well, the only reason I know it is because he played for the freaking Ravens from all Lewis, right? <laughs> Correct. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So. Joke. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So Eric Dickerson, Adrian Peterson, Jamal Lewis, Barry Sanders, Terrell Davis, Chris Johnson. Terrell Janoe Davis Simpson. hit 2,000. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it was like uh, late 90s, I think. It was uh, uh, like like 98, I think it was. Like 98. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So, Jake, you are one up. Uh, next question for you all. Matt, we'll start with you again with being our guest. Matt, who's the fastest running back to get to 3,000 y- rushing yards and 1,500 receiving yards? Fastest running back. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah, the fastest running back to first. All right. Um, boy, that's a tricky one. Uh, I'm thinking... I want to go with Barry Sanders because I feel like he had just a phenomenal rookie season and just carried the momentum. So I'm going to say Barry Sanders. I'm not entirely sure, but that's my final answer. Oh, no. Incorrect. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Jake, it's to you. Fastest running back to get 3,000 yards, 1,500 receiving yards. I can't believe I'm saying this. But I think that it's my least favorite human being in the history of the world. Is it Le'Veon Bell? It is Le'Veon Bell. 38 I games. 2000, 2015, I think. Correct. Yep. Yeah, it was that year. 
Yeah, yeah. So he missed. Here's a crazy thing: he missed 14 games in his first four seasons because of inj- injury and suspension. So he did that uh, 38 games. He could have did it a lot faster. So, all right. So, uh, Jake, you are up uh, two to nothing. The next question uh, is: uh, There's 12 answers. 12 teams that have never won the Super Bowl. Who are they? Cincinnati Bengals. Ha! Correct. Arizona Cardinals. Yep. Uh, Cleveland Browns. Yes. Ha. Uh, Detroit Lions. Yep. Buffalo Bills. Yes. Minnesota Vikings. The Vikings. Correct. Uh, got me on the O for fours. Houston Texans. Correct. The Dirty Birds, Atlanta Falcons. Keep it going. Keep it going, R.I.P. Jake. R.I.P. 28 to three. Um, <laughs> oh, come on. Come on. Uh, San Diego slash L.A. Chargers. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, tennis. Tennessee Titans? Yes. <laughs> um, uh, J- Jacksonville. Yes. All right. Here we go, Matt. Uh, who is it? I know who it is. Philadelphia just won it. Finally. Thank God. Yes. <laughs> do, 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 oh, do, man. Come on now. Do. Ah, crap. All right. I got nothing. Oh, man. <laughs> it is the Carolina Panthers. Panthers. Man, the Jake Del Home. Yes, yes. Oh, so Del Home. Uh, all right, so Jake, three, nothing. You're up. I still think we need to do the fourth. Of course. Yeah. Okay. All right. So this next question is off of the this last question. Four of those teams who have never won a Super Bowl have never made it to the Super Bowl. Ooh. Who is it? Who are they? Uh, Cleveland. Correct. Uh, Jacksonville never got there. Correct. Houston? Yep. Last one? Gosh, oh my gosh. Detroit Lions. Hey! <laughs> Man, this is there some extra okay. cheering. Let's keep this cheering going. Good job, guys. That was impressive. <laughs> all right well oh man i think we're gonna have to have you back on matt for a grudge match with jake i don't know about you but that's what i feel uh I yeah enjoyed it too and i will definitely be getting hold of jake to come back on <laughs> nice. awesome let's go let's go. i'm yeah, looking we, forward to it brother yeah i had a great time thanks for being on with us matt uh, it was it was fun. Thanks for all your input, uh, Matt. Where can we uh, get all your fantasy knowledge and all of your articles? It's a uh, top shelf dff dot com. It's a fantasy website. I'm one of the lead writers on it, and we also have they have a podcast that I will eventually be on as well. And we're just pumping out fantasy advice to everyone awesome. who will listen to it. Hey, I'm gonna I need, need it. it. I'm gonna need it. I can tell also you. Also, <laughs> follow me on Twitter at not Matt J. But I mostly just tweet about my farm and nonsense. <laughs> every now and then, there's a fantasy nugget in there. Hey, you had me at farm. Jennings so. Dairy. <laughs> well, Matt, thanks, <laughs> thanks again for joining us. We really appreciate it. We hope you can be on again. So there goes Matt Jennings, uh, Jake. That was All a right, lot of thanks. fun. There he goes, Matt Jennings. That was a lot oh, of fun, man, Jake. I'll tell you. 
he and I go way back to Miss Linda's Cub Scouts. Yeah, you know, I mean, it, you know, we uh, we grew up together, and that's what's that's what's always so fun. You know, his 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 last name obviously a J, mine's H, and when you only have sixty kids in your class, you know, we were together every day of our lives for you know uh, you know fourteen years. You know, from elementary school all the way to our senior year. Um, he's a life my lifelong best friend. It was awesome to have him on here. Yeah, yeah, great time, uh, Jake. As always. Always, it was a pleasure. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it out there listening. Make sure you join us again on Monday with Christian and Jonathan, Wednesday with Max and Keith, and then if you so uh, choose so, Jake and me here next Friday. Uh, presented by Squadcast.fm and brought to you by Public House Number Media. Number one overall, yep. Pittsburgh Buyers Club, one overall. <laughs> so, Jake, as always, again, pleasure uh working with you this friday any closing thoughts for us well i mean really you know i mean it's, it's going to be interesting coming in this week and you know you've got some you've got some nfl preseason coming up you know t- uh, tonight and saturday night you know t- tonight and tomorrow um you know you get to see rookies like josh rosen like we were talking about today um but also baseball baseball we don't really think in middle of august as you know a really important time in the mlb schedule but you know these races especially in the national league are so close you look at the pittsburgh pirates the st louis cardinals those teams that are still about five places out of that wild card spot how do they come about do they have a big week this week it's all something we need to look out for yeah yeah i agree it should be a lot of fun Uh, a lot of things happening uh, with baseball, of course, ramping up, uh, football coming into play with some preseason. Uh, make sure you stay with us here in the cheap seats on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Uh, Matt Coyne, Jake Holmes, as always, thank you for joining us. We will see you again here on Monday with Christian and Jonathan.